Good day, grade 5. Welcome to our science class. I am Teacher Joey, your virtual teacher for today. Today, class, we will travel to another lesson in science. I know and I am sure that you are all excited for another fun-filled learning activities for today. So let us now begin. But wait, class, before we start our discussion, try to find a nice and comfortable place inside your home where you can focus with your lesson. I want you to prepare yourself as well as your materials necessary for your study. Kindly bring out your pen and paper so that you could jot down some important notes needed for your learning. Always remember, class, that having knowledge is having a power. For today's lesson, we're going to talk about the constellation. In your previous lesson, you learned about the stars. The stars are hot ball of glowing gases, huge celestial bodies made of gases and can produce light and heat through nuclear fusion inside their cores. You have also learned the characteristic of stars and classify stars according to their size, brightness, color, and temperature. Take a close look at this picture. Have you had a chance to look at the night sky such as this? If you look up the clear night sky from a dark location far away from city street lights, you may be able to see thousands of stars. What have you observed about the group of stars? Were there familiar patterns that you noticed? What shapes did you see? So at the end of this lesson class, you will learn to describe the different patterns formed by groups of stars that can be seen at particular times of year. People are always fascinated by the night sky and the stars. People in ancient times noticed how stars appear to form patterns in the sky. These star patterns are known as constellations. The ancient people first observed these groups of stars as outlines of animals, mythological heroes, gods, and other objects. They found it easier to locate and remember constellations when they try to find a distinct and particular pattern how a group of stars are arranged. This time, let's have an opening activity. All you have to do is to find the five names of constellations by connecting the letters to find the word on the puzzle. So let's begin. If you can see the word or seminar, your answer is correct. Next. If you see the word or major, your answer is correct. If you see the word Orion, your answer is right. If you see the word Hydra, very good, your answer is correct. And if you see the word Cepheus, your answer is right. This time, let's further know what is constellations all about. So constellations are groups of stars that appear to form different shapes or patterns in the sky. The word constellation comes from the Latin term constellation, which can be translated as set of stars. So take note of that. So people interpret the star patterns as figures of different animals ancient Greek heroes and other objects that have resemblance to the shape of the group of stars. In other words class, constellations is a group of stars like a dot to dot puzzle. If you join the dots or the stars and use a lot of your imagination, the picture would look like an object, animal, or a person. As we all know class that during ancient times, people observed that different star patterns always appear in the night sky at different parts of the year. So the star patterns as views on earth change from month to month. They made use of these star patterns to keep track 
of the right time to plant and harvest their crops so with these constellations they give names to the group of star patterns based on their resemblance to some animals heroes gods and goddesses in mythology and other objects to make them easier to remember so some of the constellations connected to greek mythology are orion the giant hunter hercules perseus pegasus and andromeda so as you can see at the night sky constellations are formed by bright stars that appear close to each other on the sky but are actually far apart with each other the shapes you see all depend on your point of view the kinds of patterns people saw depend on the myths and legends that were part of their culture so some constellations are easier to identify than others because of their what you called shape so in addition to constellations there are few asterism which are noteworthy to be considered what are these asterisms all about so these are groups of stars forming easily recognizable patterns but not yet recognized officially by astronomers which are good landmarks to use to locate some important objects in the sky just like what you call big deeper the best examples of these asterisms is what you call the big deeper is a group of seven bright stars three stars form the handle and four stars on form the bowl another is the little deeper but in an opposite form so as you have noticed class na um, in one year meron yung mga stars na andyan lang one year sila but after that one year kusa nala silang mawawala and that is normal because of what you call the earth service and kapag nakita niya yung mga stars in one year that is what you call a circumpolar because some constellations appear all year round or what you call circumpolar and some appear only on a certain months of the year so those constellations that we can see year-round are called circumpolar so these constellations all circle the north star and because we live in the northern hemisphere we see them all year round the examples of this are the ursa major the cassiopeia the ursa minor and cygnus the swan so here are some examples of constellations. We have number one, Ursa Mayor, also known as the Great Bear, is a northern sky constellation with a mythology that dates back to prehistory. Its Latin name means great or larger, or she bear, referring to and contrasted with Ursa Minor, the lesser bear which is located nearby. This Orsa Mayor is one of the famous constellations in the northern sky in the Great Bear, in Latin Orsa Mayor. Because of its complicated shape, you would need to expand your imagination to see it. It looks like a bear. Parts of its body and tail form another group of stars called the Big Deeper. And this Big Deeper, as we talk all about, is a kind of asterisms number two constellation is that ursa minor so near the big bear is ursa minor or little bear or little deeper polaris is at the end of the handle of the little deeper this is how looks ursa minor is next one is casopeia so another constellations near polaris have five stars of Cassiopeia form a big W or M is a constellation in the northern sky named after the vain queen Cassiopeia in Greek mythology who boasted about her unrevealed beauty Cassiopeia is located in the northern sky and from latitude above 34 degree north it is visible year round constellation is the orion 
one of the brightest constellation. The three stars that make up the belt of this figure are equally spaced in a straight row. The belt is the center of a nearly rectangular figure which makes up the body of the hunter Orion. So Orion have two bright stars, the Betelgeuse and Rigel are found in the constellation Orion. So the Betelgeuse marks one of the corner of the rectangle, the right shoulder of the hunter, while Rigel, a very bright star, mark his left leg. So Orion also has a sword hanging down below his belt and a bow extending to the right of his right shoulder. Another constellation is the Cygnus. It is the northern constellation lying on the plain of the Milky Way. Its name is derived from the Latinized Greek word for swan. Cygnus is one of the most recognizable constellations of the northern summer and autumn. It features a prominent asterism known as the Northern Cross in contrast to the Southern Cross. Next constellation is that Canis Major and Canis Minor. So are thought of as the hunting dog companions of Orion. Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, is part of the constellation Canis Major or the Great Dog. Another constellation is Gemini, called the Twins, is companion of Orion in the night sky. Another constellation is that Leo or the Lion, is another member of the group of constellation of Orion. Another one is Taurus or what you call the bull, is located directly above Orion. Another one is Scorpius, always follow Orion around the sky as the earth rotates. This could have been the reason and inspiration of the ancient people who associated the legend that Orion was killed by a scorpion. Another constellation is that Andromeda is one of the most impressive sights in the winter sky. It contains about 160 stars which made it easily seen by the naked eye. It is easily to find because of its close neighbor and large Andromeda galaxy. About 2,000 years ago, some astronomers observed that the sun would appear to move across the sky entering a different constellation each month. So with this, 12 constellations came to be called the constellations in the zodiac. Each constellation is a sign of the zodiac. The zodiac is an imaginary belt that circles the sky close to the plane of Earth's orbit around the sun. The 12 constellations in the zodiac are the following. We have the Sagittarius, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Aries, Sco Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. The names were given based on the familiar objects, animals, and humans that resemble the patterns of stars. Many ancient people believed that the signs of the zodiac can influence the behavior and emotions of a person as revealed in the horoscope. But nowadays, people read their horoscope for fun and do not believe it to be true. So let's now proceed to the astronomical instrument and their uses. So with this instrument, we are able to see these um, stars closely, especially those astronomers. So number one is optical telescope. It collects the visible light from the outer space. These telescopes come from two varieties, the refracting and reflecting. When we say refracting, it collects and focuses light into a glass, lens and focuses light directly into the eyepiece. While refracting, it reflects light on a mirror and sends into the eyepiece. This optical telescope was used by Galileo who was the 
first to use this telescope to see the craters on the moon and the dark spots on the surface of the sun. So the telescope used by Galileo is an optical telescope. Next one is what you call the radio telescope. Have very sensitive receivers with wide antennas. With them, astronomers can study objects too far to be seen by ordinary telescopes by detecting the radio waves and the objects give off. Number three is what you call the satellites. Have a great impact on human life by tracking weather and providing fast phone, TV, and radio communication. It can also study cosmic rays and high radiation from deep space and learning about the supernovas and neutron stars. Satellites are astronomical observatories looking at distant stars and galaxies. So what are the uses of these constellations? So during ancient times, constellations help people remember their favorite stories about what they considered as gods. Later, constellations help people in many ways. So our knowledge about constellations will help us to tell general directions, measures and tell seasons, are used to locate stars and galaxies, and tracking artificial satellites launched into Earth's orbit. So as a child or as a person, what is or are the importance of the constellations? So without any other instruments used, we can tell our directions by using the stars and constellations. We should be like a constellation as well as to the people who ask direction from us when they get lost on the street. Every time we look at the stars, we will always realize that we are just but tiny specks of dust in space. We are almost nothing in space. However, our significance is not only in terms of size. Everyone is special in the eyes of our Creator. The stars will always help us appreciate the beauty and order of the universe and will remind us that we always keep humble. This time, let us now enrich what you have understand in our lesson for today. Get your pen and paper with you and answer the following questions. Read this item carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Number one. 